Hello and welcome to the MPS show, episode number 531. I am your host, Masanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is Symbiote Studio seeks your feedback on next tree plush to make. So Symbiote Studios have uh, Symbiote Studios has a whole bunch of awesome plush available already now that Luna is out but they need ideas for future cuddle mares to drain your wallet with. Uh, uh, they've posted up a tweet asking for three ponies everybody wants next. Uh, once again, uh, sorry, once they get through their current set. So uh, if you guys remember way right back when, um, Symbio Studios is the um, plush makers that you know um, cr create official My Little Pony G4 plush for the masses, and their plushes are not bad. Their quality is pretty good, and their well, besides getting fan made plush that's really awesome. Those can be stupid expensive, but uh, this one, uh, mass production made by um, a company, they're not bad, they're not bad. So, I remember last week was it, that um, I reported that a Luna plush is out and so on. Yeah, that's it. Uh, there's a follow up to that. A simple Studios uh, future, uh, future Luna plush getting revisions. I didn't see many complaints about Luna, but apparently Symbiote Studios is giving her an overhaul in the next round of productions. Revisions include bigger, lesser, aggressive eyes and wider nose bridge and general wing revision according to their tweet. So, uh, they expect to ship the next round in July. So <coughs> remember way back when? where I uh, just gave you guys my opinion about the plush like how I'm not really big fan of the muzzle like it, it seems a bit off but hey uh, it's all good and I don't really think nothing was I didn't really complain much about the wing so that was a non-issue for me uh, but one thing I did mention was oh the main uh, the main wasn't really transparent like how it, wa it was in the show but to be honest how do you even do that with a plush and getting the materials right and the look right and so on this is the best alternative they could have done and I'm, I'm cool with that <coughs> but it seems that they got a lot of feedback from the general public I'm guessing and they say that yeah we we'll try and do stuff I, I don't really see the eyes being that aggressive and angry and whatnot, but yeah, they, they say that uh, they want to do it, I, I guess. Personally for me, I think her eyes looks pretty okay. Um, one thing, her muzzle could use a bit of rework, um, especially from this angle, I, yeah. But it's neither here or there. Let's move on to the next news. So next news is My Little Pony Secret Lair series include a surprise Discord Lord of Disharmony card. Magic the Gathering announced ponies, the Galloping 2, way back in September of 2023. That it yeah, it has been a while. And the set are finally arriving at people's houses. If you pre-order them, this one includes Rainbow Dash. Applejack, Pinkie Pie, and Fluttershy as playable legendary creatures, but they're, they've thrown a curveball into the mix, apparently. Discord was added at the last minute. Discord, um, yeah, I, I, that's just the ability, I, I'll cover that later. What kind of chaotic deck will you make for him? I posted up a funny way to get Twilight's uh, Coalition victory a few months ago. If you want to, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Seth. So, anywho, um, let's let's read Discord. Let, let's get into Discord. So, Discord 
Lord of Disharmony is a generic two black and red uh, legendary creature chimera flying uh, has the keyword flying and its ability is at the beginning of your end step choose a random non land magic card name until your next end step you may cast a copy of a spell with that name and mana of any type can be spent to cast it if you cast this spell this way copy this ability if this card is on the battlefield <coughs> uh, and its flavor text is oh what fun is there in making sense so um <clears throat> let's break down everything about this card i'm a big fan of magic the gathering as i tell you guys every week where i go on a regular basis but uh, let's just break down what this card really does um and just so that you guys understand that this card, the card and every pony card here are non-legal in any type of tournament or any type of format. Uh, it's, uh, if you look down at the, what you call this, um, note here for its legality, uh, it's not legal in Standard, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, Commander, Oathbreaker and so on. And why is that? Well, in Magic the Gathering, there was a rule where if the card has a silver border, uh, like this one, as you can see here, uh, that card is considered to be a non-tournament legal magic card. You still can play with your friends on a kitchen table, kitchen table magic, or uh, if you guys agree to uh, having silver border commanders and whatnot. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. <coughs> but in general. Um, silver borders are not particularly, um, uh, how do I say, uh, it's not particularly cool to play with them if everybody's not in uh, agreement. But yes, uh, let, let's get back to this one. So uh, this card here has flying, that means uh, it can only be blocked by creature with flying or reach, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then it says at the beginning of your end step, choose a random non um, magic, uh, non land magic card name. So, what that means is that at random, I have to pick a name of a magic the gathering card. And it has to be a non land. How do you do that? And um, what does it mean? Uh, and in general, oh, sorry, and, and in all honesty, you can do something like uh, use Scryfall to randomly generate a card name or randomly pick a card. So over on Scryfall, they have this button here called random. So if I were to click this and look at what it gives me, uh, randomly I'll get a card like this one, Wildfire Entelmental. Uh, it's a two, uh, two generic and two red, blah, 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 doesn't matter. but. This is what I get if I press random. So if I press if I were to press random again, I'll get something like uh, Cult of the Underlich. So it's one of those things where, oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty chaotic. And it really works for this card. <clears throat> but anyway, um, let's read more of what he can do so I can break it down for you guys. So until your next end step, you may cast a copy of the spell with that name and mana of any type can be spent to cast it so what it means here is that until the next end, st uh, end step meaning af uh, after one full rotation of the table and back to my turn I can cast the copy of the spell uh, which is currently um, called of the Undercity so until it goes back to my end turn. Is it? Uh, until next end step, you may cast a copy. Yeah, until the next end step, uh, which means it's the end of my turn. And this card's first ability trigger saying that uh, pick a card at random and so on. So it, it, it's kind of a kind of close loop thing, which is pretty cool. But anyway, um, and it says spend mana of any color. So 
in magic, when you cast a spell, you need to generate mana of the specific color. So for this one, um, for Discord is a two generic, meaning any color mana would do for it, and you need at least a black and a red. And here, for example, a cult of the under city. You need one generic, two blues, and one black. So you need to have well any color for the generic one, uh, two blue mana, and one black uh, mana. Uh, mana can be produced by land or artifacts and so on. Uh, but that's besides the point, and I'm not going to go into that for now. Um, this is just explaining Discord's whole sh uh, gimmick, but. Discord gives the ability to say this um, until your next end step you may cast a copy of the spell with the with that name and mana can be uh, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it so meaning that you can use any colored mana to cast the spell you can use all blacks, all blues, all reds, all whites, or even all generics. So that's what you mean. Uh, one of the few things that I'm breaking down and trying to understand here is that it says until your next end step, you may cast a copy of a spell with that name and blah 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 blah. blah. So does this mean that uh, it's like an extra card in my hand or something like that? So it could be just an extra card in hand. So. Uh, in magic usually your hand size is up to seven unless stated otherwise but generally it's up to seven so with this course ability here the way i'm looking at it and i'm under trying to understand it is that i think that you'll get an extra card in your invisible hand kind of thing because of this course ability um, because it says um, at the beginning of your end step choose a non magical random until your end step which is my next end step which is going to be my next turn before the first ability triggers uh, I can s I can cast a copy of the spell uh, with that name and use mana of any type uh, any type can be spent and so on you, you get the general idea I, I've been repeating that whole lot so I, I'm guessing that's it because at first I thought you could just it's just like Oh, this card, uh, this invisible name thingy here is a permanent, uh, is a fixture that I can just cast it all the time. So if I have a zero mana, uh, zero mana value card, I can just cast it infinitely and get a bunch of zero mana artifacts and so on. But I'm guessing that's not true because from what I can tell, it says that I really, uh, it says, I can cast uh, a copy of a spell with the name and add mana of any type blah, blah, blah. so I, I, I just really need to sit down and really understand but that's the size of point that's besides the point I'm, I'm really going into deep in analysis, uh, analyzing this card so anyway um, the last effect for this one which is pretty interesting if you copy this spell this way copy this ability if this card is on the battlefield so what this tells me is that until the next end step I still have this card um, meaning okay let, let's just roll the random gener uh, random card name generator here and see what I get okay uh, I get a icefall region <coughs> it's in the phone let's just say that icefall region is in the phone with this card's ability so what what I well, what hap what will happen is that until the next turn until my next end turn whatever it is is that I get Icefall Regent on the phone and I can cast it at any time I can possibly cast it and then on the next end step this cause things uh, this cause ability triggers and I have to roll the random number generator giving me something like alpha status and so on you get the general idea so if I were to cast it at instant speed or if if this card is gone I still can cast it but uh, the first this card first ability will not trigger because he's not on the battlefield because he was removed for as long as anything happens I can cast 
it's pretty fascinating. It's pretty fascinating. Sorry, I'm, I'm just geeking out because this is so much fun. I've been thinking about how to do Discord because uh, red black is kind of my color that I like to play with previously. But <clears throat> so anyway, um, if Discord is on the field, if I were to copy or if I were to cast alpha status, and if Discord's on the field, I'll get another copy of alpha status, meaning I have two of these cards. Let's just say I roll, around, uh, roll again, I'll get uh, Herald of the Fair, uh, two and white, but Discord says any colors, so I cast this, and this goes on the battlefield, and it triggers again. So this this is pretty this is pretty interesting. Wow. But I'm, I'm really fascinated by this part here, like th this few lines here, because until your next end step, you may cast a copy of a spell with that name and mana of any type can be spent to cast it mostly is the first part here where uh, until your next end step you may cast a copy of the spell like my friends who are judges they mentioned that oh you can just only cast it one time but i'm not 100 sure if if i cast it it's gone or for as long as until the end turn like I, I really need to see what others are saying about this card <clears throat> no rules here obviously but uh, besides the point um yeah you're probably wondering oh norman you've been talking about this a lot um did you get it i mentioned before i got the drop and ta-da oh no that's bad oh no you yeah manual focusing is not great but anywho yes i got it i got it and i pull out of the awesome secret layer box which um hasbro has made it smaller because previously it was big so this box is pretty cute and cool so um you open it from the, from the middle you crack it open and they'll give you something like this this is a pretty awesome box here we go um i don't know if you can see it oh, plus the focusing is bad it's a secret there across my little pony and once you push it open it just says a secret layer drop and this is just generic for every um secret layer that comes uh, after this it doesn't really have any special what you call this uh, special printing besides the sleeves on it but it's still awesome i like it i <laughs> you know me i like magic i like ponies i get i have to get it and i did and uh, i'm thinking about building discord the other thing is probably building applejack uh if i'm not mistaken uh let's see this is going to be risky so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go full picture mode yes i'm going to go for this um, camera view before I go into the card. Uh, the reason why is I, I th some magic cards are kind of risque for this podcast because hmm how, how do I put this hmm yeah th there's certain arts that might not be suitable for kids below so let me just try to find the pony cards it's been a while okay so cool there we go <clears throat> there we go where 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 huh all right all right <coughs> and all right back to the screen and yeah so we, we got a few cards like this like applejack rainbow dash pinkie pie and fluttershy and what really caught my interest is Applejack. Uh, so let me just break it down for you guys again. Uh, Applejack is a two generic green white legendary creature pony uh, and it has family gathering. At the beginning of your end step, put a toy you own onto the battlefield as a 2 2 creature token with that toy's name, colors, and creature type if the toy has wings the token has flying 
if the toy has a horn, scry 2. If neither, create a food token. So what this tells me is that uh, Applejack is a token commander build. Um, you want to have a lot of toys or whatnot, but it doesn't really matter because you, you can just use something just to represent the toy and so on. <laughs> the idea is just to fill the bot with awesome toys that you have or whatnot. If you're playing Warhammer, you can just put those little uh, mini f uh, miniatures on top of the table and say, oh, this is my army, Arr! and so on. But the idea is just to have fun, little your bot with tokens and so on. It, it's, it's really awesome. So the, the full description here is like, okay, let's just say it's uh, at the beginning of my end step. Okay, so my end step happens, I create a token, a 2-2 two -two creature token with the toy's name. Uh, it, it's a bit ambiguous on what type of creature they are. So for example, let's just say I pull out my RX-78 Gundam onto the table. Uh, I'll put it out there and it's a 2-2 two -two creature token with the toy's name, color and creature type. So what this tells me is that uh, it's a RX-78 Gundam, uh, colors are white, blue, red, and yellow, I guess. And then uh, the creature type is a robot or mecha, probably robot. So yay. And let's see, does it, has, uh, does it have wings? No, it doesn't. Okay, does it have a horn? No, it doesn't. So, um, if it has wings, it can fly. If it has horns, I'll get to look at the top two cards of my library and decide if I want to put them on top or bottom of my library. And then, uh, if it has neither, I'll create a food token, which is kind of cool with Applejack because she feeds the people. That's awesome. So, <coughs> Applejack here is kind of fun in that sense where if you get the ability to double up your tokens you you can do it but uh, I, i'm trying to understand here at the beginning of your end step put a toy you own onto the battlefield as a creature token with the toy name so ah uh, uh, boy this is going to be huh so i'm guessing because because this is wacky at the beginning of your end step, that means at the end of my turn, put a toy you own, blah blah blah, blah, blah uh, to do creature token. So if there's an ability that creates another token, so if you put one, <coughs> let's just say one, uh, one Gundam. If I just put a one Gundam and the, and it's a token creature with the toy's name and color and whatnot. So my one Gundam creates two Gundams. That's going to be very confusing in the long run. Very confusing. Huh. Yeah, now, now that's cleared up. Still confusing. Wait. Oh, this is... This is... Havoc. Because it says here um, at the bottom line, uh, if it's neither, if it doesn't have a horn or a wing, uh, create a foot token. So that means, like I mentioned before, if I have a token doubler, pulling out a Gundam creates me two Gundams, and if the two of them are not, doesn't have wings or doesn't have uh, a horn, I'll create a food token. So if I were to create two Gundams, that means I have to do the ability twice. That means, uh, does the Gundam have wings or horn? No, I'll create a food token. So if the food token comes in, it creates twice because of the doubler. And then the second one triggers. So I have four food tokens. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. Oh, wow. That, that is stupid good. So that means I'll be filling up my board with tokens. Oh, that's, that's going to be chaotic. A fun kind of chaotic. Wow. That's going to be fun. Um, another one I was interested in was Rainbow Dash because um, it's flying haste whenever a creature you control with 
flying and or haste attacks you get uh, 20% cooler you start with 0% so what this tells me is if I have at least 5 creatures with flying and or haste attacking I can get uh, a 20 I'll get 20% cooler so if I hit with 5 creatures with it just says attack yeah, if I attack with five creatures, I already get hundred percent, and the hundred uh, percent. Sorry, her bottom line here is says Sonic Ring Boom. Tap, tap Rainbow Dash. If you're at least one hundred percent cool, at white, blue, black, green, uh, red, red, green, Uber, uh, draw a card and reset your coolness. So what that means is, I'll tap Rainbow Dash. I get five colors, and I get to draw a card, and this is really fun oh god oh wow like yeah the, uh, sorry Pinkie Pie oh, sorry. sorry Pinkie Pie sorry for the shy you guys are too complicated um, Pinkie Pie wants um, it, it's a smile tribal deck what, what that means is every card in the deck has um, a smile like there's there's some kind of smiling theme for it like it's smiling and so on uh, and then every pony is invited uh, your party consists of each creature you control and your party is always full what does that mean I don't know I, I, I don't know what Th that, that's just so confusing and then for the shy oh god for the shy she's a defender she doesn't want to fight understandable she has flying that's awesome um, and here's the thing pay one tap put a plus one plus one counter on each creature with a tail target player controls stare down up to one target creature until end of turn uh, it can attack or block as long as you're looking directly at it but this is stupid fun kind of scenario so basically you pay one you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature with a tail target player controls so if you were my opponent and your creature has a tail how do I know your creature has a tail a most obvious one is animals animals have tail most of the time and I, I, I get to look at them stare them down and say no no you don't attack me mmm <laughs> which is kind of fun but it's really complicated to play around so my, my votes are on discord rainbow dash and applejack because these three are already awesome they're they're so much fun like rainbow dash here is the best viable option just to go for that full blown uh, combat heavy deck plus you can mix in five colors going in and then our uh, applejack is one of those low to the ground spawn tokens kind of deck where you you can just easily spawn the board with tokens if you build it right and it's in the color so that's really good all in all this is a very fascinating build or fascinating card yeah oh wow that's that that took a while Oof. anyway let's move on to the last news <clears throat> ah war thunder mobile brings back the pony for april fools with flying is magic update yay uh, the mobile version of War Thunder is bringing back their Pony April Fool's joke from years ago, complete with a colorful map and very uh, variopus other Pegasus thing. And there's a video, I checked it out, it was pretty fun. And it's cool of War Thunder just to uh, do this again. And since it's what, uh, 2024 and ponies are not that strong as before but still they're doing it it's fun it's it's, it's just for the funsies so that's that's awesome and yeah i know this video and everything in the news is a bit late but still something is fun something is good that's cool yay and <clears throat> that is the news for this week so let's go on to the next topic uh, what have i been doing with my month i guess so um, besides magic and D&D, I picked up something new. 
one of the few things that I've been doing lately is to play badminton and it, it's kind of a if you got no idea what badminton is uh, pause here and go uh, do a Google search because um, it's kind of awesome and cool <clears throat> welcome back so um, I've been playing badminton for a bit now like I think what three weeks in a row so that's awesome uh, it gets me all worked up um, sweaty and whatnot so yeah um, at least I'm working out at least I'm doing some exercise so that's awesome uh, what else so um, give me a second wonder. yeah so I've been doing that and it, I, I've, I've kind of enjoyed it like uh, playing with my friends and whatnot that, that's the fun part where you got friends to play with and just to work out so yeah that's pretty cool uh, magic magic has been okay like um, a friend a friend of the community has gone away for a bit for work and now he's back so that's cool so we've been playing with him for a bit and whatnot before he has to go back to work but it was just too awesome like um, just playing with him is just so much fun um, besides that uh, the ND has been on a snack for a bit because of our game master who has stuff they need to do personal issues life and so on you know life life stuff can we help and then as for me other than that yeah work has been keeping me busy so hence the lack of updates and whatnot and yeah man like i'm trying my best to keep up to date and stuff but work has been really killing me man i'm just surprised that what uh it's 24 and I, I think we've been doing this for a while now man I, I really need to keep up to date with the anniversary stuff yeah whew. but anyhow um let's wrap things up let's wrap things up <clears throat> anyway if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at themvshowgmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters or x as it's now called and the show's twitter account is at the MBS show and my personal account is at norman sanzo also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And links will be in the show notes. Yay! Uh, if you would like to support the show, please do so. You can do so at patreon.com. Uh, patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Uh, talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob. Lucky night and myself like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show see ya <laughs>